What's up, everyone? Welcome to this week's mindset video, which is all about breaking free from limiting beliefs. And I'm going to break down for you four key things that I know are going to help you not just understand why limiting beliefs have been in your way and how they have been affecting not just your results, but you as a human being, and what we need to do to flip that around so that you can start becoming what I call the best you 2.0, the best version of you. So as always, I'm going to get out my trusty blackboard. We're going to dive into a few things here, but if there's something that you feel stuck on, write it down, put it in the comments below, reach out to me personally, and let me know, because again, this is a topic that so many people talk about and they share opinions about, but they don't give you a lot of tactile things that you can start to put in place to move out of this place of limiting beliefs and to start creating beliefs that serve you, that are in line with the version of you that you want to become. And that's all that I focus on. So with that said, let's dive on to my little blackboard here so that we can start looking at some of these things to get it. Right. Now, the very first thing that we want to look at are, is what are some of your limiting beliefs? And how are they affecting you? All right, let me get things on the screen here. All right, make that a little bit smaller. Okay. My trusty, beautiful handwriting. Okay. A lot of the beliefs are not good enough. Good. Enough. Not worthy. No one loves me. Um, those are the three core. I would say that there are a few others underneath those, but another main one that I see very often is not me. And that one you might not understand yet. So I'll explain it a bit more when we get to it. But the most important thing is just to understand that these tend to be the three core beliefs, all right, especially one, two, three, that hold most people back. That if I look at what's happening on the outside in terms of their results, in terms of their emotions, feelings, triggers, reaction, the cycles that they stay stuck in, their mindset and the different things that are affecting them on a day-to-day -day basis, I can almost strip all of that away and always come back to one of these three slash four limiting beliefs. And when you understand that, it's great. It's like having an operating system that always comes back to three core problems. And if, an I, if I can identify what each of those three, four, three or four core problems are, then I understand, okay, cool. I know that this is the problem. What do I need to do now in order to move out of that, in order to assess the damage, repair the damage, and then rebuild whatever I need to so that things start operating and working the way that I want them to. Because the only way that we've identified them is that things aren't working the way that you want them to. And when we look at what we're going to break down today, the number one thing that I want to look at here is like, how are these limiting beliefs showing up in your life and how are they affecting you? Because not good enough is definitely going to be affecting your ability to see yourself doing more, to taking on challenges, to being outspoken, having confidence, doing new things, being somebody that can see success, that can achieve success, that can maintain success. If you are coming from a place of this limiting belief, being the backbone of your operating system, how do you expect that you're going to achieve the results that you want, that you'll achieve the level of transformation that you're trying to work toward, that you'll become the version of you where that is no longer true? And we're going to have a look at all of this today and why we want to look at breaking free from these limiting beliefs. But more importantly, how the fuck do we do that? Because it's great to want it and wish for it, but how do you do it? which is what we're going to dive into today. So hang in here with me. The next limiting belief is not worthy. And not worthy 
is attached to often not feeling like somebody would love you, not feeling worthy of the things that have happened to you in your life, being somebody who told that they were worthless constantly. And I've shared this in a few of my videos, guys. I could show you 15, 20 different emails that I got from my father, literally seven to nine A4 pages with bullet points and appendix. Yes, an appendix referred to point 1.3 of section one or two, breaking down why I am not worthy of success. Why am I a bad human being? Why nobody would love me? Why I have been the cause for their marriage to destruct? For all of these different things, literally itemized. And it's funny because I share that with you now and I have no emotion attached to it. Whereas so long, that was an internal driver for every fucking reaction and emotion that I held within my body. I had to reprogram the fuck out of this through the process I'm going to show you guys today to feel like I was worthy. I still sometimes will feel that little limiting belief want to kick in, especially when it comes to relationships for me and feeling like I'm worthy of love. Because point number three here, no one loves me. If I own not good enough, not worthy, and no one loves me, and I own all three limiting beliefs, my operating system is pretty fucked up. And guess what? Most of you own two or three of these already. Most, like majority. That's why they're a core three to four for almost everybody. It's why that regardless of what's happening in your life and how different your outcomes look or what trauma and pain you went through or what cycles you may be stuck in, I can strip it all back to being these two or three with anybody, including me. And I pretty much had all three for a very, very long time. And the hardest one for me to deal with and the hardest one for me to move away from was no one will love me because I was literally told my whole life why no one will and can love me. But yet I accepted that. I took it on. I owned it. I made it mine. I can't blame him. I can't blame what I went through. I can't blame the fact that I would have my face beaten in and my mom would walk past me and not even look at me. She couldn't even fucking look at me bleeding on the floor. My mom person that's naturally supposed to love you couldn't even look at me let alone come and make sure that I was okay and pick me up like that shit hurt. ingrained pain and I'm sharing that with you because I want you to understand that despite those things despite that level of pain and trauma and stories and validation as to why I could own those limiting beliefs they didn't suit me then me, then help me in any way at all. And if you're stuck with any of these three limiting beliefs, it's a great place to get to because it, it's coming from a place of this isn't working for me. Not what I want. This is not how I want to feel. Okay, cool. Now let's work on what we need to do to move the fuck out of here. And that's it. I don't need to own any other shit around that. I don't need to go over story after story after story after story after story to back up and validate that limiting belief which is where most of you fucking live day in and day out. You live in validation for the things that you don't fucking want. And I say that with you with intensity because you need to wake the fuck up and realize that that's what you're doing. I can't do that without slapping you in the face and making you realize and holding that mirror up in front of you and making you realize that that is the shit and that is the way that you are playing. And if you're not willing to do that, then the rest of what I'm going to share with you today is never going to fucking work. Last one here. Not me. This is one where I feel has become more prevalent in the last five years than ever before. I wouldn't have written it down here five years ago. And the reason why I think that's the case is we are becoming so fucking disconnected from reality and from who we are that you don't even know who me is. So you have this limiting belief of that not me or because you can't see yourself doing that or because you've been... How do I say this? You've been allowed to get away with not showing up for so long that you don't even see how you not showing up has transformed into the results that you have now. And then you're not willing to own those results. Because 
you were allowed for most of your life to get away with not committing to anything. I didn't have that choice growing up. Most of my generation didn't have that choice growing up. You either fucking did it or you got beaten. You either did it or you were fucking punished. There was no not doing it and then that being acceptable. If you lost, you lost. If you didn't win, you didn't get a fucking medal. There was no participation award. If you didn't get to school, you got caned. If I forgot my book, I got caned. Those of you who don't know what a cane is, it's a fucking whip on your ass. Like sixth in front of the whole classroom and people look at that and I'm not saying it was the way at all, but we didn't have a choice. And the problem is our generation grew up with probably a bit of hostility around that. So they didn't want to put you through the same thing. So you had had a choice. You have had an opportunity to not show up and that be okay. So now there's this limiting belief of that's not me. That's becoming more and more and more prevalent because you're so distracted from who you are. You watch other people all day long. So you're stuck in comparison. Oh, that's not me. Or I couldn't do that. I couldn't be that type of person because you're constantly in comparison because you haven't had to figure shit out for yourself because it's okay if you don't have it figured out yet. For us, it wasn't okay. We had to figure shit out. There was no choice. So just understand that this is a part of what's going on for you nowadays. It's probably going to be a part of what's happening with your kids. If you have kids and you're watching this. It's a reason why, as a limiting belief now, they have such a higher level of anxiety and depression because they are lacking so much clarity around who the fuck they are. And to think about themselves doing something that they've never done before because they've never been forced to do it, suddenly they have heightened amounts of cortisol and fight or flight mode and anxiety. And then they get depressed because they want to do that. But in their mind, that's not me. Well, how the fuck do you know? I don't know because I haven't tried, but I don't have to try. So I'm just going to sit here and complain about why it's not me. And I'm not going to carry on anymore around this. But again, this is why it's a limiting belief I never would have written down five years ago. Whereas now I see it constantly and I hear it coming through people's languaging all the time. All right. Next thing we really want to have a look at here all right, is why what you're doing now is not working for you. Okay, and I'm going to give you an example here and let's clean some of this up and get it out of our way. All right. Over here, there is you. Beautiful stick, man. Right. In the middle here, we have what I've been sharing with you guys in the last few videos. And then over here, there is me. Gender neutral. Okay, <laughs> no guy, no girl. In the middle here, we have our frame. All right. At the moment, this is you. This is you 2.0 or who you want to be. And you are stuck at the moment in this game of being here and wanting to go here. And that's not a bad game to be in. It's a game that we all want to play if we want to evolve, if we want to transform, if we want to achieve the level of results that we want. We can't do it without taking on new skills, new abilities, getting better at something and achieving some level of success or results. Otherwise, everything just looks the same. So it is the same and we haven't moved forward at all yet. Okay. What happens is you're trying to operate as a Windows computer when your operating system is Mac. And look, I only speak Apple. It's what I tell everyone, but I like this as an analogy. This U.0 to U2.0 version has Windows as an operating system. That's what it's built on. That's what it has. That's how it runs. That's how it creates results. You have an operating system that only works with Mac. Yet you want to be U2.0. And you're frustrated because every time that you try to be U2.0, the operating system seems off. Things don't work. You don't stick to it. You don't do what you need to do. You don't show up. It's too hard. I can't. Why doesn't that work for me? And then you get frustrated. And then you're like, hang on, 
let me go back here. I'll go back to the drawing board for a while. Let me get some more ideas. Maybe I'll get enthusiastic again and we'll go again. And then I get to the same stage I was last time, or maybe something else happens. And the operating system is it's just not there. Like what I'm trying to get to work is not working. Like shit on Windows doesn't work the same way it does on a Mac. It just doesn't work. And I'm trying to mesh the two worlds, but nothing's working. And then I'm getting really frustrated because I'm wondering why I'm not able to do what I want to do. And all I want you to understand is this because how you're setting things up. At the moment, if I'm like, do you know what? I want to be a Mac book. That's what I want to be. Now I'm just a Mac. Maybe I'm a Mac mini. Okay. I'm a Mac mini. Operating systems are similar. Okay. I operate based on certain things. And those things that I operate on are, let me write it down here for you guys. Again, my rules, my beliefs, my stories, and my laws. All of those things make up my identity. And right now my identity is a Mac Mini. And based on being a Mac Mini, no matter how hard I try, I cannot be and operate at the same speed with the same level of results and efficiency and consistency as a MacBook Pro. Just can't do it. I don't have the hardware. My operating system doesn't work the same way. And when I understand that, and I'm looking at this gap that I want to get across here, like I'm looking at this gap that I want to go and I want to end up here. I have to be able to understand that in order for me to do that, what's the number one thing that's in the way? What's the biggest thing that I have to work through here to end up here? Right? It's not your hustle. It's not your grind. It's not your food plan. It's not your program. It's not your course. It's not your job. It's not your partner. It's not any of those things. What is it? Right? It is you. It's you. It's your identity. And when you understand that, just like when we understand that at the moment, your identity is directly connected to the limiting beliefs that you have. So think about that. It's like iOS. It's the operating system for your Mac Mini, right? It's based on these three things. And if all three of those things aren't working well, and they're limiting your ability to be able to work well, how well do you think your Mac Mini is running? It's why we want the MacBook Pro because we think, man, I want to operate like that. I want to work that way. I want those results. I want to look that way. I want to be that fast, that efficient, have that level of income. I want to have that type of relationship. I want to be the fucking MacBook Pro. But yet, you've tried to come over there three or four times and it's never worked because your operating system is still based on being not only a Mac Mini, but you've got three hardware issues with your limiting beliefs. And I'm just trying to give you an analogy here so that you can visualize things because sometimes we need that. I know I need it. When I understand this process, all of the fucking noise and all of the pain of the cycles of start, stop, you got to do this and do that and do that, all of that fucking noise disappears because it's irrelevant. No matter how much of that stuff you try and do, take on, buy, invest in, attempt, fail in, it is never going to change this ever. It's like you will never be able to burn more fat consistently without having lean muscle in your body. Your body cannot put oxygen around your body without your heart. You will never, ever be able to achieve the res results that you want to achieve as you 2.0 if you don't change your identity. If we don't change the way that you operate 
so that when you go through a transformation, you end up with new hardware, new beliefs, with a new operating system. You're now the MacBook Pro. And the identity shift of now you are a MacBook Pro, you can never be a MacBook Mini again. It got destroyed. That shit wasn't working. We upgraded and we became a MacBook Pro. We threw the MacBook Mini out. It's fucking gone. That's where transformation lives. This is how we stop playing this game of frustration and overwhelm and repeated failures. You've just been approaching shit the wrong way around. And that's all. We just got to realize that, hey, at the end of the day, this hasn't been working for me. It's why when I take people through my four-week identity shift process, it has a 100% success rate. Because this is how we've been designed to work as human beings. There's no if, but, maybes and kind of need to find my fucking ninth realm of whatever it is and stroke crystal. That shit is just more noise. I don't need to hustle harder and grind harder and become a fucking Navy SEAL in five days and cry amongst men and all of that shit. It's just fucking noise. The best part of that process is the reality check. But guess what? You can give yourself that same reality check every fucking day that you look in the mirror. Every day. When I understand this, yeah, that's when I flip games and I move into the transformation game, which is what we're going to start focusing on now. So in order, and I'm going to give you guys something very powerful that I only share within my course. In order to change the operating system, you have to embrace what I call the power of self. And I broke this down, I think, two weeks ago, and I'm going to break it down for you again. All right. And I'm just going to give you the basic framework of it because my students pay a lot of money to get access to this. All right. But I want you to understand that this is an actual process to reprogram, redefine, refine, for some of you, your identity. The first thing that we want to do here is we want to submit. And I'll explain that in a second. Then we want to evolve. Then we want to look. And then we want to forgive. When I understand each of these steps, I am literally taking myself through a reprogram process. I am going to be able to not only define my current identity, but I'm now going to go through a process to redefine that. And when I can redefine that, now I can create a different operating system. I can change out the hardware to hardware that I know will serve me. Beliefs that will drive me, not keep me stuck and unhappy. When I look at submit, what I want to think about there more than anything is I want to submit to the facts. I'm submitting to the facts of where I am. I'm submitting to the fact of my current reality. I'm submitting to the fact that my operating system is just not working for me. I'm submitting to the facts that now I'm a fucking Mac Mini, but I want to be a MacBook Pro. That's it. And I need to own all the truths around that. And I also need to submit to the fact that now I have certain hardware. I have a certain set of limiting beliefs, whether you have all three, whether you have four, whether you have one, whether you have two, doesn't matter. Everything is going to come back to one of those core three, maybe four. And when I can submit to that and then I can stand there and then I can own it, then I can evolve and I can start looking at my emotional intelligence. What do I need to do in order to change those beliefs? Because again, emotional intelligence is awareness, but it only becomes intelligent when I do something with that awareness. Otherwise, it's just voluntary ignorance. Emotional intelligence is what you do with what you have now found. Think about that, right? 
Like when you go, that person's really intelligent or that person's very smart. We say that based on what they've done. If somebody just talks to me with a whole bunch of fucking noise and statistics, I'd be like, look, he's book smart, but he's not very intelligent because he's fucking broke. He's done nothing with it. Whereas I look at other people that have had nothing, but they have created everything. They are very practically intelligent. Emotional intelligence is the same. Now that I have awareness, what am I doing with it? What new beliefs am I willing to put in place that I have de identified for me are going to move me forward? I am worthy. I am somebody that people will love. I am good enough. I am everything that I need to be. I am the person that needs to lead X, Y, and Z. I am the type of parent I wished for. I am the type of partner that I always wanted to be. I am the version of me that I always wanted to see. Do something with it. Empower yourself to create what you want with your emotional intelligence. Look. Perspective. And focus. Where my energy goes, my focus flows, or vice versa. Where my focus flows, my energy goes. And when my perspective is based on being a Mac Mini, and not when I look at my limitations as a Mac Mini, there's only so many things that I can do. That's my limitations. When I look at my limitations by being a MacBook Pro, there's so much more that I can do, even things that I'm not aware of yet. But if my focus and perspective is based on the old me, based on the old limited beliefs, based on the old hardware, based on my old level of possibilities and what I felt like I was worth and what I achieved results wise, how well do you think I'm going to be able to be a MacBook Pro? How well do you think I'm going to be able to operate and stay at this level? You're not. That's why this doesn't work for so many people. Whereas when my perspective is based on the fact that, hey, now I'm here, that version of me is dead. I look back and there's nothing to see. Or if I look back, I don't even recognize what that is. I don't even remember what it was like to be a Mac Mini. I don't even remember how that thing used to fucking work. Like, it's irrelevant because all of my focus and energy and perspective is here and where I'm going. And the best way to pick that up within yourself is just listen to the conversations that come out of your mouth. Listen to the things that you're saying to yourself on a consistent basis. Are they based on you being here and everything that you're building and who you're becoming? Or are they based on everything that you've done in the past and what you didn't like and what didn't work for you? Listen to your languaging. It's going to show you everything. It shows me how well I know somebody is on this journey or not. Last thing here is forgiveness. Being able to let go. At some point, you're going to have to forgive yourself. You're going to have to forgive others. You're going to have to let go of a lot of pain and trauma that has been attached to your limiting beliefs that have been like the anchors that have been holding down those limiting beliefs so that you can't pull that hardware out and replace it with beliefs that are going to function with a MacBook Pro. I keep using this analogy, but you guys get where I am with it all. You're weighing yourself down. You're holding yourself back. And without forgiveness, then I'm choosing to carry that weight. I'm choosing to be held down. I'm the one that is keeping the anchor attached to me. No one else. I can stay in blame and shame. It's only going to keep me in the pit of pain. I have to forgive. I have to let go. And... I did it with my dad. I did it with my mom. There's no emotion. And I, I still speak to my mom. My dad's dead now, but I didn't even talk to him on his deathbed. And there was no emotion with that. And you guys might think that's cold, but for me, I'd said goodbye to him so long ago. I forgave him for everything so long ago that it was just another person. There was no attachment to any guilt, blame, emotion, reaction, nothing. And it took me a long time to get to that place. And I'm not saying you need to get to the same place, but what I want you to understand is that a lot of what you're not forgiving yourself for is what is holding you back and keeping you attached to your limiting beliefs. And most of it, the scary part, is 
shit that you're not willing to give, forgive yourself about. Fuck ups that you've made, mistakes that you've made, ways that you let people down, ways that you have been living in guilt and shame around heavy fucking emotions that you've been carrying around that you haven't been willing to forgive yourself for. And you might say, well, how? You just do it. And if you want specific exercises, I mean, there's so many. Now I've got a couple of clients doing different things around this. One of them is writing a letter to every single person that they need to forgive or that they want to apologize to and get forgiveness from. Even though those people might not be alive and they'll never respond and you probably never send the letter. Get it out. Get it out. Write it down. There are so many ways to figure out the how. The most important part is choosing to do it. That's what's going to redefine your ability to not just let go of what's been holding you back, but to be able to transition into the new you free of this stuff. Because every time I keep an anchor, I'm going to get dragged back. When I don't have an anchor, it's gone forever. I'll never be pulled back into that space ever again, ever. That's what I'm passionate to help you with. When I look at all of this and to wrap things up, because I've given you guys a lot today, okay, is I really want to understand. Uh, let me. Nope. Okay. There we go. I want you to understand that now, once I can focus on this and I understand my current identity, I understand my current beliefs, rules, stories, laws. And then what limiting beliefs they're connected to. And this is a process that I take people through literally in four weeks. In week one, we get this dialed in. We know exactly who you are, what's been in your way, what limiting beliefs have been in the way. And we have this raw truth conversation in order to identify where we are. What does the current you look like? We then get clear on who we want to be. Like... This U2.0, who's that person? Why do you want to be that person? What's driving you to be that version of you? Who do you need to be? What do your rules, beliefs, laws, stories need to be in order to operate at, as that version of you? And then once we get clear on that, we're then able to go through a process where we rebuild self. We recreate the version of us that we need to be by reprogramming who we currently are. And for so many of you, you are so busy trying to be somebody new. And I don't say that with judgment or criticism. I love the fact that that's what you want, but you have never spent the time identifying who you currently are, what's currently in your way, and then how do you reprogram the version of you to not only become a U2.0, but to kill off, remove, disconnect completely from the old you. Because unless the process you are following is designed to do both, you are always, always going end up yo-yoing back and forth between these two places and it's fucking painful and it is frustrating and every time that you go back it hurts more that smack sound gets louder the level of guilt and blame and i'm not worthy and i'm a failure and all of that shit hits harder and harder and harder and harder and harder and harder it's why some people just ultimately end up giving up because to keep trying feels too painful. They don't want that pain anymore, so they give up and they stay stuck. And even though that's painful because they're in the pit of pain, it's what they know. It's what they've been used to. It's what's become comfortable for them, even though it's uncomfortable and it's not what they want. And this is why I've been doing what I've been doing now for almost 25 years. Because this is the process where people get stuck. And it's also a process that has systematic protocols that you can work through 
to guarantee that you never stay stuck and that you build the U 2.0 that you want to be. But you got to be willing to do the work. You got to be willing to show up. It's why anybody that comes into my four week program, they need to be somebody that I know is going to do the work. And the work's not fucking hard. Four weeks, one hour a week, maybe two max. And in four weeks, you will go through a complete identity shift. And if you want to learn more about that, okay, reach out to me, Adam at ilovechanginglives.com. Send me a message on social media that, hey, I really want to go through this identity shift. It's not expensive at all. Especially not when I compare it to you being able to finally get out of the fucking space that you've been in and start to become the you that's going to create every result and take on any challenge that you want. That to me is exciting. And there's no amount of value that that's worth, especially when you've been in this space as long as I have and you've seen what those results look like for people. It's um, immeasurable and exciting. So I hope you've taken a lot from that. Put these things into play. Work through that power of claiming self, four-step process, and then start to put in place the hardware, the new beliefs that are going to drive your new operating system so that you not only are the best U2.0, but you continue to evolve into a better version of you. I'll speak to you guys next week.